Why, hello everyone! Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV and Shadowbringers on Playframe! It's finally happening! Sorry, I'm just a little giddy still about finally being in my favorite expansion. So, we are in the Crystarium and we've introduced ourselves, had a little tour of the place, learned a bit about the first as a location. A lot of mysteries remain, though, and I still got questions, so, uh, Mr. Exarch, if you could please explain. The Crystal Exarch is finally ready to discuss the matter of your comrades' whereabouts. Please do. You've done as I requested and learned something of the world in which you find yourself. Now it's time I fulfilled my half of the bargain and explained what has befallen your comrades. That is a conversation I would rather have in the privacy of my quarters, however. I must go on ahead to the tower and organize a few things, but I shall see that the guard knows to admit you. Hmm. The tower's gate lies open, then? Just like that? Then Grahatia is... Oh, Grahatia! Hey, remember Grahatia? Uh, last time, we were dealing with Crystal Tower things way back when. Right after the main quest of A Realm Reborn, when we were doing that raid series. There were a bunch of characters we met during that stretch, but one of them was that uh, red-haired... Mikote, Catboy, Grahatia, that excitable fellow who was all obsessed with the tower, and then later on we found out that he was one of the keys to opening it, because he had some sort of, like, history with it or something, and then at the end he locked himself inside. So, yeah, presumably, if this is the same crystal tower, then if the doors are open, someone should probably have found Grahatia. Hmm. Should we bring him up? I am curious to know if they've encountered him. So, just like that, then Grahatia is... I am not familiar with that name. Is there something I should know? Eh, worth asking. An extraordinary tale. But I'm afraid I found no such individual residing within the tower when it passed into my care. Mayhap we can revisit that mystery another time. For now, I think it best we focus on the present. Uh, fair enough. I want to see the Catboy again. Oh well. I guess there's other closer friends we still have to find first. Greetings, sir. The Exarch awaits you within. Thank you. Traveled to another world and I still can't open my own doors. Welcome to the Ocular, my private study. We can speak here without fear of being overheard. I have much to explain, but the truths which I must touch upon in doing so would cause only distress and confusion to the people of this world. Pray keep that in mind. Now, I am sure you are desperate to know the fate of your fellow Scions. To put it simply, they are here in the first. Their arrival, however, was not as recent as you may imagine. Here, Time flows at a different pace from that of the Source. In the space of a single hour in your home world, an entire year might pass in the first, and the reverse could also be true. The pace fluctuates without rhyme or reason, and it cannot be predicted. That said, we seem to be entering a period of near equivalence, and thus, for the moment, you need not overly concern yourself with the passage of time. I guess that's good. As for your companions, however, Eustola and Urianger have dwelled here for three winters, all told, while Thancred's count stands at five. Even our more recent arrivals, Alphino and Alize, have lived in the first for almost a year. Oh boy. My intention had been to summon only you, but the art of reaching across worlds has proven exceedingly difficult to master. Thus it was that my fumbling hand closed upon those to whom your fate is most closely bound as well. As they were not the object of my summons, their transference was incomplete. 
Though they may appear to possess corporeal bodies, they are, in truth, merely spirits that one can see and touch. Consequently, while you yourself will be able to pass between worlds with relative freedom, they will not. Much as it grieves me, they are stranded here, unable to return. That's not great, Exarch. Find a way to send them back. <laughs> what have they been doing all this time? I'm curious about that too, but I really need to stress to you that you need to find a way to send them back. We spent every waking hour searching for a way to reverse the summoning. In the beginning, at least. As you may have surmised, however, our efforts met with little success. And then we all but abandoned the endeavor once Uriange shared with us the vision he had witnessed during his journey through the rift. In that chaotic no man's land between realms, time and space warp and blend in unexpected ways. What Uriange saw was the future that which would one day come to pass. In his vision of tomorrow, the first was rejoined with the source. This collision of worlds brought about the eighth umbral calamity and the deaths of countless multitudes. Amongst those who perished, Uriange clearly saw the fall of the Scion's mightiest champion. He watched you die. And thus did the Scions embrace their exile, and began searching this world for a means to forestall the coming catastrophe in yours. Their souls are stranded in the first, yes, but they have fought on, desperate to save their home and you from destruction. Nor have their efforts been in vain, for it was they who finally established that the elimination of the Sin Eaters will indeed serve to prevent the calamity. Considering these circumstances of our meeting, you would be forgiven for doubting my version of events. And so, before all else, I would suggest you track down your comrades and hear the tale from their lips. I shall of course be happy to assist in these reunions, and you need not make any decisions regarding your involvement until you are certain of where you stand. Meanwhile, I promise I will not rest until I have found a way to help your friends return home. What say you? Have I earned your trust for the moment, at least? Well, I guess. For the moment. Aye, but I'll see that you keep that promise. For want of a better choice. Also true, I suppose. Well, we've already made our opinion pretty clear. We can be nice. For the moment. Excellent. You will not regret this. With that settled, we shall have to see about getting you ready for the road. Traveling across the rift has no doubt left you weary. I will arrange for a room where you might rest in comfort. While it's being prepared, perhaps I can show you around. Well, that sounds nice. Great office, by the way. And here I thought I'd already gotten the whole tour. The Crystarium boasts a number of residential districts, but I've been informed that a room has just become available at the Pendants. Which, as it turns out, is perfect. Our path there will take us past the markets, and I was hoping to give you my own introduction to their wares. Now come along. Okay. I follow. Such a neat looking and very different location for a new city. Also, fun bit of trivia, actually. Uh, so, when Final Fantasy XIV was first announced and like early footage was revealed, one of the things that they showed off was this very interesting city space uh, that 
it really looked very tech demo-y more than anything else, but really, like, the city that it most strongly resembled was actually this. Like, this sort of a uh, wrought iron glass architecture type thing. And obviously, there was not a city like this <laughs> in 14 when the game launched. It wouldn't really be until now that uh, that loose design would be incorporated into an actual place in the game, but still neat to see the uh, <laughs> sort of like the early ideas for the architecture here being explored and established well before the MMO launched, even in its like disaster form. Almost a decade before that location became something of a reality, a much better reality. This is the Musica Universalis, the commercial heart of the Crystarium. All you might need to prepare for your journeys can be purchased here. Ah, yes. You must be curious about the currency. Fear not. The gill you carry will serve you well enough. I actually hadn't even considered that. Thank you. Good to hear. Each nation once minted its own coins, but was all a jumbled mess following the Flood. After much debate, the local merchants eventually elected to revert to the old ways, wherein a coin's value was decided by the worth of its metal. As for a unit of measurement, we agreed upon the term gill, a word borrowed from coins uncovered within the Crystal Tower here. And as our traders peddled their wares across the land, so too did our usage of gill become common practice. Well, that's convenient. From what your stola tells me, a standard coin from the source equates to exactly one gill here, or near enough not to matter. Our way of life has benefited greatly from the artifacts we recovered from the tower, some of which may be familiar to you. Hey, tombstones. Allegan stuff. which are also sort of cell phones. But I fear it would not be practical for us to provide everything to which you are accustomed. You shall need a means to access the commodities of your home world. A van kerm sin? Yes, I'm here. Of course I'm here. Amusements do you have for me today? Oh. Hello. My dear Feo Ool, paragon of pixie kind. For you, I have the most vital task. This fine gentleman is a friend from a distant realm. Hello. And we have need of a means to ferry things back and forth from his home. Might you be able to assist us in this matter? From beyond, didn't you? From beyond the rift. How wonderfully exciting! What a brave and reckless and marvelous thing you did! You've the heart of a pixie, you do. After careful consideration, I have decided to grant you my assistance. Make a pact with me, and the fun can begin. But answer me this, traveler: Did your garments come with you when you crossed over? Your teeth, your nails? I think so. Just as I thought! Then you've a good stout connection with your home through which all your belongings, great and small, may easily pass. From this moment forth I will be your Isne Fis, and you my Sne Yak. Like the branch which sprouts from the sapling, our bond will flow unbroken from one to the other. Raise your hand. Done. 
We are bound now, dearest sapling. Come, come then. Make your request. Tell me your desire. I wish to visit this world of yours. I'm so excited. Mayhap her message to your friends in the source to inform them of your safe arrival. Oh, that's a good idea. Hmm. Send a message to Tataru or to Kryle. Kryle's busy right now. I mean, they both are, but Tataru's... Kryle's worrying about others right now. Tataru's probably worrying about me. Consider it done. As you heard, that was Feo Ul of the Pixies. Their kind possess an affinity for magic akin to that of arcane beings. They rarely show themselves in populated areas, but Feo is insatiably curious even by Pixie standards, and seems to have taken a liking to the Crystarium. Right, we were going to organize a room for you, weren't we? Go along. Sounds good. Never really thought of my nails as possessions before. Hmm. As a result of your pact with Feo Ul, you now have access to delivery moogles, market boards, and summoning bells while in the first. Also very convenient. And kind of fun that they are coming up with a variety of in-fiction reasons why you can still access all of your... <laughs> various other features within the MMO. Not really necessary. And maybe a little contrived. But cute all the same. Nice spot. Hello. Welcome to the Pendants, sir. You're here with the Exarch. That I am. Ah, there you are. I was just finalizing the matter of your accommodation. You will have a private room here at the Pendants for the duration of your stay, to make use of as you see fit. When you are ready to retire, the manager will show you to your lodgings. Pray, rest and recuperate, and we shall reconvene in the ocular anon. I believe that covers all of the practical concerns. Thank you for answering my call, Dermon. We are denied the comforting blanket of night, but may peaceful dreams attend you, nonetheless. Oh, thank you. I would love to see my room. A pleasure to meet you, sir, and welcome to your new home at the Pendants. Your room is ready, if you'd care to retire. Oh, yes. Ooh. Very nice. And, come on, Dermon, let's not be rude. And who are you? The Warrior of Darkness? What? Did you just... You can hear me? Oh, God, how long has it been? I... I... That was what I called myself in your world. The Warrior of Darkness. My real name is Ardbet. I used an alias in the source. A daft one, looking back. A little bit. If you recall my tale, it was my comrades and I who caused the flood. We 
we thought our home doomed. And so we listened to the Asians. Let them guide us to the source and try to hasten their God's damned ardor. I remember when we fell, defeated by you and yours. I remember our audience with Minfilia, how she listened to our pleas and returned our souls to the first. The flood was poised to swallow Norvrand. Minfilia and my friends, they... They surrendered what little they had left to hold it back. Just faded away. Leaving me to bear witness. Tell me, do you know the year? How much time has passed since we caused the flood? About a hundred years from the sound of things. A hundred years? A hundred long years. My hands find no purchase. My gestures catch no eye, and my pleas, be they whispered or screamed, reach not a single ear. I am a shade, cursed to do naught but drift. I feel as if I've been walking forever. I hardly noticed when my mind and body began to fray at the edges. Then bang! My senses were sharp again. I felt like a fish being reeled in, and before I knew it, I found myself in this room. Why is it that you can see me? What are you even doing here, come to that? Boy, a lot of long explanations to give today. Summoned to save the first. A waste of time. This world is beyond saving, like those who try to save it. Muddled as my mind may be, I've not forgotten that. But if fate has brought me to you, the one person in this God's forsaken world who can see and hear me, then perhaps there is a reason I endured. If I can find out why I was left behind, then maybe... Maybe I can bring this journey of mine to an end. Well, I'll be watching, Warrior of Light. But do me a favor. Be careful out there. This world has had its fill of heroes. Good to see you. Dermon, we're going to need some PJs, bud. But all right, all rested up. Ready to take on the forever day. Sure is nice out here, though. I like it. Here, better save ourselves a lot of running around. I did go ahead and, between episodes, get attuned to the remainder of these for some faster moving around. Won't help us with all these stairs, though. 
Good for keeping the legs in shape. Can I go in, please? Master Terman, the Exarch awaits you within. Real nice room you have. Ah, how did you find your new quarters? I trust you were able to rest? Mostly, yes. Probably worth mentioning the ghostly visitor, in case that's a concern. I did have a ghostly visitor. I was not aware the room was haunted, and you were rather tired. Well, should you receive another visitation, be sure to let me know. Now, let us return to the subject of the Scion's whereabouts. Yes, please. This map shows the lands of Norfrand, the only area to be spared the Flood of Light. The Crystarium is here, in the region known as Lakeland. And to the north is the Fairy Kingdom of Il Meg. That is where you'll find Urianger. To the east lies the once prosperous civilization of Rak Tika. Your Stola is stationed there, in the heart of the forest. Alas, neither location can be reached without considerable difficulty. As such, I would suggest you first seek out one of the twins, each of whom is stationed but a short flight from the Crystarium. Works for me. Alfino is on Calusia, an island off the western shore. It is home to a city called Yulmor, where the rich and privileged while away their days in idleness. For his part in furthering our cause, Alfino journeyed there to meet with the citizenry and forge alliances. From what I hear, he has since kept himself busy gathering information around the main settlement. That's our boy. Alize, meanwhile, traveled south to the arid wastes of Armoreng. They lie upon the very edge of the inhabitable world, where the flood of light was halted. Those who dwell there live in constant fear of attack by the Sin Eaters. In contrast to her brother, Alize felt that her energies would better be spent learning about the enemy, and thus, she sells her services as a guard, both to hone her skills and gather information on her foe. And that's our girl. So, will it be Calicia or Armoreng? It matters not which you choose to visit first. Simply inform me once you've made your decision, and I will see to it that you are provided with a suitable mount. Ah, but you must be wondering about Thancred. He has taken up with a new companion, and is presently engaged as a wandering hunter of Sin Eaters. Huh. Being ever on the move, his whereabouts are often difficult to ascertain, but I am certain your paths will cross ere long. Well, that is very him. Glad everyone seems to be doing kind of okay, considering. Hmm. And now we get to choose who do we go to find first. Your first order of business will be to reunite with Alphano and Alice. In so doing, the predicament here in Norvrant should become abundantly clear. As for communications with the source, Feoul will gladly serve as your messenger. If needs be, however, you yourself should be capable of making the journey between worlds. The device here will serve as a portal. Simply touching a hand to its surface will transport you to the location of the beacon I left at the base of the tower. In theory, at least. Yeah, maybe let's not test that right now. We've been through a lot already. And you know what? We will come back and make our decision of who to go check on first next time. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will... It's hard to find any good lighting in here, isn't it, Derman? It's all very... it's very blue. Anyway, I will see you all on Friday for some more Shadowbringers. Take care until then, and goodbye!